up. I cannot wait to show you how quickly and easily I was able to put that song together. Just super simple. I think you're gonna be blown away, but first, welcome to the video. I'm Rob Arnold. Today, I'm gonna be showing off the new Jason Sukoff preset pack for the Tone Hub from STL Tones. Lately, I've been a big fan of the STL stuff, the Tone Hub, the Amp Hub, and it's because it just sounds killer right away. So I just got this Jason Sukoff pack and loaded it up. It's got a ton of tones here, 85 different tones in here, tons of different amp and uh, cab, mic, overdrive combinations and stuff like that. But this is gonna be a different type of video. I'm not gonna take you through all these tones like you'd expect, and this one sounds like this, and this one sounds like this, because it's really just like splitting hairs, you know? All this stuff, they're just heavy overdriven amps. They all sound great. They were all modeled perfectly. Uh, I have a huge amount of respect for Jason Sukoff. I had the pleasure of working with him in the past. Uh, more on that in a sec, or in a, a little later, but because uh, we're gonna get into the music here first. But in this video, I wanted to show you that I just brought up this plugin, picked a preset, and it sounded so good right away without touching a single knob or doing anything that I was just inspired to start writing the song that you heard there at the beginning of the video. I knew I wanted to make a song, something to demonstrate it. I wanted to go that route, like put something together rather than just going through all, all the tones, but, and I didn't even need to go through all the tones because the one that I found just sounds killer. Could I have tweaked it further? Absolutely, I could have gone on, but again, the point here is that you could just do this stuff so quickly because it sounds great right out of the box. And that's what I like. And I think that's what a lot of you guys are after. Sure, a lot of, a lot of us like to turn knobs and have all these things to experiment with, but I think probably the majority of us wanna just be able to fire something up and get jamming. At least that's where I'm coming from, that's what I'm preaching, and that's what attracts me. So here we go here uh, with this pack. So I loaded it up, not knowing what to expect here. And I brought up the first preset called Coleslaw. I don't even know what that is. Lobotomy. <laughs> and um, yeah, it sounded cool. And I, I looked at it and I was like, all right, that's a uh, EVH 5150. I'm not super familiar with those. What I am familiar with is the 6505 plus is 5152 is basically the same amp. And so I'm just like, let me try one of those first. So uh, I came across a combination here, oh, 6505 with a uh, Mesa Oversized Traditional with a 57, fantastic. I like the kind of combination. It's got this overdrive here. I'm not really into overdrives. So I was like, let me look a little further. Ooh, number six, perfect. 5152, again, which is the same thing as a 6505 in my opinion. Um, through a Mesa Oversized Traditional with a 57, Stock pick, uh, what, what, I don't think that matters in this case because uh, we're gonna be using our own pickups and our own guitars. This is uh, ESP LTD MH1007 with the Evertune Bridge, by the way. Uh, and uh, no overdrive, and it just sounded killer right away. Oh, I guess we need to uh, get this going, yeah. <laughs> So again, hearing that, I was like, man, that just sounds badass right away. Let me get going. And uh, so let me show you how I just put together this song super quickly. So just kind of came up, came up with that riff. So uh, I recorded it right here. Let's just, hear, let's just hear that by itself. Okay, that just repeats. And uh, then I just doubled it, other side. Easy as that. 
do some drums together. You can use any program you want. Every DAW digital audio workstation comes with one, but I'm using Superior Drummer 3 here, or 2, I'm sorry. Still haven't made the switch to 3. I just like this. I like the sounds. I've been using it for everything, and I know it well. That's what's important, too, when it comes to the songwriting stuff, putting songs together, just having a program that you know well that you can get the sounds and the ideas out of your head into the computer quickly. So uh, I like Superior Drummer, but you can use anything. There's a million great programs out there. Um, so I just wrote some drums to it. Switch it up to different feels because it's the same riff over and over again, you know? Pretty much. Then a little lead comes in. We'll talk about that in one sec here. But uh, put a little bass in. Just uh, and I just used MIDI bass. I just uh, found a, a keyboard sound in Expand here, which is just a sampler. You can use any type of thing like that. And here's a little trick. I take my kick drums from my drum track, and this is when I'm just trying to do stuff quickly like this. If I were recording like a, an album for real or anything like that, I'd play the bass. But uh, but there's nothing wrong with this too, especially with the stuff out today. Easy bass for tune track. I mean, I've heard fantastic stuff from that. I haven't really worked with it myself. But um, anyways, so I just. Uh, I take the kick drums from my drum track that I put together and I pull those into my bass track and it's a great place to start because all the rhythms are there. Typically a bass player and the drummer you want to lock in, you know, hit the, the kicks, possibly some snares here and there. And then I just adjust the notes accordingly. If I'm playing uh, an A somewhere, I'm in drop A right now, by the way, if I'm playing an A and then, uh, you know, if I go up to an A sharp, then I can just pull those MIDI notes up to A sharp and they're still right on the drums and I can adjust their lengths, move them around any way I want, but it's a great starting place. So keep that trick in mind. Um, then, so yeah, got that going, got a good sound there. Uh, and then uh, brought in this lead. So I still haven't told you the amazing thing about this yet. I'm telling, telling you how fast it, it came together, but there's something more amazing. I'm just gonna say it right now. There is absolutely no processing whatsoever going on here. I haven't even turned a knob on the head. I could, sure, I could dial it in further, but so could you. You can play with those things for how you want it to sound in your mix, but I wanted to show you just how killer this thing sounds. I haven't moved a single knob. This is like bringing an amp home from the store, everything's at noon, and you don't even adjust anything because you like the way it sounds right away. And uh, this is the way it sounds with, there's no plugins at all. There's my drums, the bass, and the guitars. I've moved a couple faders here. This is, I brought this down. Uh, oh, these are supposed to be, oh yeah. yeah. I brought these down by one dB. My bass is down five dB. I brought my drums down a little bit. I have one limiter on here that's just kissing so that I'm not getting any, um, any clipping. There is no processing, no anything going on in any of this, guys. And just listen to this. <laughs> So you may agree or disagree, but yeah, of course, could go on mixing this more, but that sounds pretty good for just loading up the plugin, which is all I did. Let's talk about this lead for a sec. So um, I was on the number six there, like I said, and I was just cruising through, you know, here, like I said, there's 85 of them, and I noticed, oh, there's a solo. What's that like? Cool, beefy wet solo. Sounds money right off the bat. And it was interesting to me. So the, um, one of my buddies, a total gearhead, happened to mention to me that he had seen uh, from Custom Amps a 72 coupe uh, in my band Chimera's Resurrection documentary from 2006 or seven when we actually went down to record that album at Jason Sukoff's studio, Audio Hammer in Florida. And during that, that documentary, which a link for you guys here, watch that after the video if you wanna see how 
resurrection was made or better yet just see how Sukov is because he's a cra the craziest dude he's so funny and an absolute savant prodigy whatever he's insane on the guitar insane with his you know behind the desk his vocal melodies everything just a truly amazing musician and the fact that he loves death metal and stuff is just makes it all the better we had such a good time with him it was the best recording experience of my life i bet some of the other guys would agree too just just with how much fun we had we lived down there we basically lived with them for a month uh, recorded the album just had so much fun but anyways in the uh, in one of the scenes where we're recording, um, there's the 72 coupe in this amp rack, a bunch with a bunch of other amps. And this guy happened, uh, my, my buddy Aaron pointed it out just like two days ago, and he said, "Hey, this thing's in here," and I saw it, and I'm like, "Hell, hell yeah!" So I just chose it, and this is what it sounds like. Again, no knobs moved here on the head. Just this, that straight solo sound over these straight rhythm sounds here. Just coleslaw, just coleslaw C. Again, a 5152 through a Mesa cab with a 57. No overdrives or anything like that. Of course, you can turn on a bunch of different overdrives in this STL. They have a ton for you here. Tons of effects. Move the mic around the cabinet. Tons of different heads. Just really cool stuff that, um, Again, I back. Is there anything else I wanted to say here? I don't know. Other than I'm blown away once again with the sound of this thing and then just how quickly you could put stuff together, which again is the name of the game when you're trying to be creative. You don't want to mess around. There is that time for sure when you want to just sit and tweak amps for a long time too. So go ahead and do that too. And again, if you wanted to see that, there are a lot of other videos out there where guys with this plugin are going through every single one. You can definitely check those out. I wanted to kind of show a different angle here. And if you made it this far and have enjoyed it, I really appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up for me. Before you go, check this out and take my recommendation here because I've got a couple playlists set up for you right here that I think you should check out. Obviously, if you love this gear stuff and amps and all that, check out my gear demos and unboxing playlist. I'm going through guitars and other amps and stuff like this that I love and unbox. And also my guitar maintenance tutorials. If you're into working on guitars, I go over intonation, trust, rods, Floyd Roses, Evertunes. I've got it all. Check those out. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you on the next one.